an organized crime gang and two estate agents ran a 3.8 million cannabis empire using 14 homes in Leicester and one in Nottingham to grow drugs and sell arms. The five men were all jailed for their roles in production of the Class B drug at a hearing at Leicester Crown Court. Brothers Besmir and Gazmend Kotosi evaded detection by using a previously legitimate Leicester estate agent's Platinum homes to disguise their cannabis farms as legal lettings. But Leicestershire police examined with a keen eye fraudulent documents the gang was using and managed to track down the brothers. In March and April 2020, police arrested the Cortosi brothers along with Leicester-born cannabis wholesaler Wesley Moda and estate agents Osama Omar and Mohamed Latif. Mr Omar and Mr Latif denied wrongdoing but were found guilty on conspiracy to produce cannabis by a jury while the other three had pleaded guilty to the charges they faced. All five were jailed, each receiving sentences of five years or more. The court heard that of the 15 properties raided by the police, 13 still had large cannabis grows at the time and the other two had evidence of previous grows. The total street value of the cannabis farm was about £3.8 million. However, the court heard that with multiple harvests, the home could have produced a turnover of between six and seven million pounds each year. Besmir Kortosi, 31, of Courtyard Close, Sistan, was jailed for nine years and nine months for producing and supplying cannabis, as well as false document offences. His brother, Gazmen Kortosi, 28, of no fixed address, was locked up for six years and nine months for conspiring to produce the Class B drugs. Mr Moden, 43 of Park Row, Wigston, got five years for conspiracy to supply. Platinum and Holmes boss, Mr Omar, who was 37, of Everest Court, St Matthews, Leicester, was jailed for seven years while his trusted right-hand man, Mr Latif, who was 47, of Kitchener Road, Irvington, Leicester, was jailed for five and a half years. After jailing the five men, Judge Robert Brown said, this was a quality piece of police investigative work. Took a keen eye and insight to see the pattern, the common thread that was linking the cases. He said that the police's work had meant that it was the ringleaders of the conspiracy who were facing justice, instead of the people looking after the grows and guarding them. False pay slips, bank documents and fake ID cards had all been used by the Cortosi brothers and the two estate agents to protect themselves from detection. The court heard. The judge said this kind of offending at this level has to be punished severely. Rented properties presented you with an opportunity for growing the cannabis undetected if you set it the correct way. The estate agents were part of a team giving the cover needed to present the facade of a legitimate landlord and tenant agreements. This conspiracy represented serious organised criminal activity. Earlier in the hearing, mitigation was made for all five. The court heard that Bismir Kotosi had no previous convictions, had pleaded guilty and had a family including a son he had never met due to his three years behind bars. Gazman Kortosi's barrister said his client was also of previous good character and had also pleaded guilty. The court heard that Mr Omar was of positive good character, volunteering in his community and caring for his parents and four children, while Mr Latif was described as a man of previous good character who had been suffering with a £44,000 debt and mental health problems at the time of his offending. Mr Moden's barrister said his client was drinking a bottle of vodka a day and also dealing with debt problems at the same time of the conspiracy. He was a hard-working man with a two-year-old child and a second one on the way. Victoria Stafford, who worked on the investigation as part of East Midlands Special Operations Unit, EMSOU, said, this was a long and complex investigation, which finally ended in the criminal activity of the gangs who had been operating on a professional and well-organized level for some time. The combined efforts of all those involved in this investigation, whether that was around enforcement or investigation, managed to successfully seize a combined total of over 160 kilos of cannabis, with an estimated street value of over £2 million. Drugs likely to be destined for the streets of Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland and into the communities where you live. This this type of investigation represents our outgoing commitment to remove drugs from our streets and we would like to continue to encourage the public to resort to report suspicions around drug activity to us so we can carry on working towards tackling the issue. A woman who carried out a violent assault in East Dulwich 
Dulwich. East Dulwich has been jailed. Princess Awosu Ansa, who was 18 of Royston, Herefordshire, entered the home of her victim. She then proceeded to stab and pour boiling water over the victim during the violent assault. The victim was taken to hospital where the injuries were assessed as non-life threatening. A harrowing assault was broadcast live on social media while sentimental items belonging to the victim were also damaged. Miss Awosu Ansa pleaded guilty to causing grievous bodily harm with intent and criminal damage at Croydon Crown Court. She was sentenced to three years imprisonment at the same court. DC Abigail Elia from Central South Command Unit said, I hope this results brings the victim some sort of comfort in knowing this violent offender has been brought to justice and I admire the strength and courage she has shown throughout. The white supremacist host of a podcast that made vile racist attacks in an attempt to stir up hatred, divide communities and spread fear has been jailed for two and a half years. James Allchurch, who was 51 from Pembrokeshire, South West Wales, and his guest used extreme racial slurs and propagated racist ideology whilst discussing topics such as grooming gangs, immigration, slavery and crime. Those invited on the podcast in included Alex Davis, a co-founder of a far-right group, National Action, who was jailed for being a member of a banned organisation. Mr Allchurch, a self-proclaimed white supremacist and adult Hitler supporter, was found guilty by jury sitting in Swansea of 10 counts of distributing audio materials to stir up racial hatred over a two-year period. In mitigation, Mr Allchurch's barrister, em Emily Baxter, said that after he was injured at work in 2007, he became unemployed and isolated, spending a lot of time online talking to the people with far-right views, many of them in the US. But the judge, Hugh Rees, told Mr Allchurch he was a perfectly intelligent man whose lack of work gave him the time you needed to harbour and promote your warped thinking and express it in a highly emotive, racial and anti-Semitic language. The judge continued, You were bent on inciting racial hatred. Your offending amounts to a stain on our humanity for fellow human beings. The contents of these podcasts were vile. You are a man who holds deep-seated views of a highly projective races and anti-Semitic nature. The judge highlighted a probation report that said, while there was no direct victim, what Mr. Oldchurch had done has an impact on community coercion and created fear. Each charge he faced related to a separate episode uploaded by Mr. Oldchurch between May 2019 and March 2021 to a public website called Radio Era, later renamed Radio Albion. A number of other known extremists in the UK and US featured on the podcast talking to Mr Allchurch who went by the alias Sven Longshanks a reference to King Edward I who was also known as Edward Longshanks and was responsible for expelling Jewish people from England in 1920. Jonathan Rees KC prosecuting described the podcast as highly racist anti-semitic and white supremacist in nature. Mr. Rees said the purpose of Radio Aaron was to spread propaganda and racial conflict. The prosecutor said that about 4,000 people listened to the podcast when they were first posted and they remained in an archive that could be accessed later. He said that Mr. Allchurch used the podcast as a propaganda mouthpiece and said it was aimed at impressionable listeners. 